Hello, my name's Tom Ingram and I run a driving school called Big Tom Driving School. I want to do this video here for people who are learning to drive and maybe they're not getting uh, they're not getting any better at driving perhaps. Or maybe you want to get more, make more progress quicker. And this video will be for you. There's a very, very common thing I've noticed over the years now. Uh, there's a very, very common thing that people do, uh, pupils do when they're learning to drive. And it is, um, <clears throat> it is driving too fast. And... Um, when you're coming up to junctions, if you drive too fast, you, you can't do things very well, such as good observations and doing things in the right order. And maybe you put it in the wrong gear and, you know, the, these kind of knock on effects just because you're driving up to the junction too fast. However, you know, why are you driving too fast? That's really the, the key question, because if there's one thing that's for sure is if you just keep on doing the same thing, if you don't change what you're doing, you'll get the same result. And so if you are finding yourself, your instructor is saying to you, um, you know, that you're just driving too quickly towards these um, junctions, you need to ask yourself the question, why? And I reckon there's about, uh, there's, uh, over the years, I've reckoned there's about five that are very, very common. And I've, and I've got them down here. I just want to go over them with you. One or two of these may really resonate with you, and so I'd, I'd watch the video to the end because it's because they're all equally as as um, well potentially anyway as relevant. <clears throat> One of the reasons why we drive too fast when we're learning to drive is because we just want to get out of people's way. We are we don't want to inconvenience anybody else. We might look into the central mirror and you might see the vehicle behind, or maybe more than one vehicle behind, and you just really just want to get out of their way. And one thing I would just sort of say to you about that is, is that accepting emergency service vehicles that are on a call, I would place your needs right at the very top of the tree. When you're learning to drive, not only are you investing your own time in doing that, but you're also probably spending your own money to, uh, to get training from a professional driving instructor. So it's, it's in your interest, your, 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 you, you you've got far more needs uh, to to actually practice on these roads and even if that does mean because I know I know not everybody's driving around for social situations some people are trying to work as well trying to get by but even then I would say your needs are higher because you know the the UK needs new drivers to come in all the time. Uh, because the new newly qualified drivers, they're going to, when they get their license, they're going to then go on to do other things. They might specialise in other types of driving other vehicles and they might just be able to get jobs because they've got a license. And so the, you're, you're right up there. That's the, way, that's the way you need to look at it. You're right up there and stop stop feeling like you've got to get out of people's way because uh, your needs are very, very high. The other reason why people drive too fast is because they're not realising that actually what the speed that they're driving at. And the reason why you don't realise the speed you're driving at is because you are within this car, this vehicle, you're not sensing the wind necessarily, you're not, it's not cold, it's quite comfortable. And because you haven't been driving necessarily very long, your eyes haven't quite picked up yet what 20 miles an hour feels like and 30 miles an hour feels like and 40 miles an hour feels like in terms of stationary objects going past, you know, when you go past them. So you just don't have the experience yet to quite realise the speed you're driving at. And so all the more important it is to regularly check your speedo and just make sure that people are quite good at this to make sure they don't speed they're, 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 they're quite good at doing that so it's not something that you can't do it's just that they don't do it when they're coming up to things higher risk situations like junctions roundabouts and stuff like that so of course if you don't know what speed you're coming up to something then you you wouldn't even realize that it would be an issue so you, you need to start paying attention to the speedo and and properly getting some brakes on to slow yourself down to give you more time time to do some of these important driving actions uh the third reason why people just drive too fast is because they don't quite have the experience yet to be able to tell which junctions really need to be much, much slower. Because there are certain junctions where your vision is really poor or maybe it's a very tight, you might be turning left or turning right and it's a really thin road that you're driving into. You may not even be able to see into the new road. There might be a parked car there, there might be pedestrians wanting to cross. 
and you haven't quite picked up the skill to be able to tell the difference between junctions where there's great vision and they're very wide uh, versus ones that are need to be much much slower uh, and sometimes you know in certain towns and cities when you're turning left and right you actually you actually need to pause and put into first gear even, even when there's no no you're not giving way to anybody you just need to put it into first pause and put it in first gear but re pupils generally are very reluctant to do that again because of what I've mentioned before they want to get out of everybody's way so the last thing they want to do is pause and stick it in first gear in the major road before they turn but that's sometimes what you need to do because sometimes the junctions are just really really very very tight and it takes practice to be able to assess the vision on a junction and how tight it is how thin it is number four is and this one is a bit of a tricky one because you, this won't necessarily be a conscious decision, but you might just be keeping up with the pace of the other drivers around you. Not deliberately, as I say, but if you've got four or five cars and they're all they're all driving towards a roundabout at 40 miles an hour, you, you just think that's what we do because that's what they're all doing. So I just stay, you know, and I can, and, but it's going to be much too fast got to remember that there are the road users around you they may have been driving 20 30 40 years and then be very very efficient at doing things driving actions and assessing things and looking at vision and judging things making judgments and then and but of course you know you, if you then put yourself at the speed that they're driving at you you don't you really don't stand a chance to be able to do that and that's not meant to be a criticism that is just true of anything that you learn isn't it whenever you learn anything in life you tend to do it slower at, to start off with and quite naturally the pace picks up uh, without you even really having to think about it because just because as the competence levels increase um, confidence increases and and the pace generally you get more efficient at doing things and it's no different with driving as well it's just that when you're driving along try not to feel like you've got to keep up with everybody else and the way that they're driving because you really really don't you know you really don't and then the last one i would say is that when you make mistakes when you're learning to drive you've got your driving instructor there they've got the dual controls things are safe you're not having accidents and it's quite easy to under understate the importance or the relevance of what's happening because nothing's really we haven't had an accident and, and nothing's occurred you haven't gone up onto the curb and so as a, as a result it's a bit uh, an, an, an analogy that i would give which uh, i i know because of my own personal circumstances if you were skiing and you were and you kept on falling over because you're skiing too fast faster than you're able to keep up with and you kept on fall, uh, falling over it hurts it really really hurts you, your skis go all over the place and you're twisting your knees and generally speaking you just don't need anybody you don't need a skiing instructor to say to you tom do you realize you're skiing too fast for what you can you don't need that because it hurts you get you start getting angry with yourself because why am i skiing faster than i can actually keep up with and so that's quite a natural thing that happens because the consequences are very real and they and they're very real to you whereas when you're learning to drive and you make mistakes it doesn't have that impact and so consequently when when if you're not careful you kind of get used to making mistakes and so if you're bowling up to roundabouts too fast and you don't see vehicles coming around the roundabout because you've driven up to it too fast, let's say your instructor intervenes uh, and, and assists you, the temptation is to go round that roundabout and just, just almost kind of ignore what just happened. And again, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that you're deliberately trying to avoid, you know, uh, um, getting better, but... It is just very easy, I'm afraid, when you're learning to drive, when you make a mistake, it's just a little bit too easy sometimes to kind of ignore what just happened. And if you want to learn to drive and you want to you want to make good progress, if you want it to be very efficient, I've been doing these intensive courses now for years, several years. And if there's one thing that I've noticed that is a common thing with pupils who make very, very good progress, it is that they just don't... That they don't take anything for granted when something happens 
uh, they they really do acknowledge what happened and they try try make all the attempts they can to root cause why that just happened because they're trying to prevent it from happening again. And it's just a case that sometimes with with um, some pupils doing doing driving training, they're just making far too many mistakes and it almost becomes like the norm. And they're not asking themselves the question, what do I need to do so that I don't keep making those mistakes? It's not hurting you. It's not, you know, it doesn't do your confidence any good making mistakes, but it's not actually hurting you. And so consequently, it's too easy to brush them off and you need to really really try and accept what's going on and you want to try and prevent it from happening again. There's just five reasons. I'd say they were really very, very common reasons why people drive around too fast. You notice that there's not, none of that has got to do with your deliberately driving too fast. I'm not talking about drivers here who are, who are racing around too quickly and they're speeding all the time. That's, got, that's not what this video is about. This is genuinely trying to help people to make better progress and, and get better with their driving. Just by simply asking themselves the questions, the question, why am I continuing to drive too fast when I'm coming up to things like uh, roundabouts and, and junctions? Why do I keep doing that? And once you start really thinking about that a little bit, you, you'll be able to pinpoint, might be one or, one or two of those five there, and that will, if you can then address that, that will really, really, you'll do a step change. You'll get better very much quicker. Okay, I hope that helps.